I'm an MD microbiologist now, but trust me, I even I for a few seconds thought that chocolate agar was made up of uh, chocolate. So even if you cannot cover all the topics, it is all right. You have to understand. Even if you think that the classification of cephalosporins is very difficult, it's all right. Hey guys and welcome to my channel. It's the travel and food doctor here and today we have a special video for my MBBS followers uh, Especially those who are in the second year. So this is kind of a Video which will help you to kind of survive uh, the MBBS course Especially I'm going to talk more about the second year MBBS or second phase of MBBS like it is called now uh, yeah. so uh, basically uh, these are some general tips which will help you to tie through yes this course is strenuous no doubt and uh, we I see a lot of students complaining about it or cribbing uh, on social media yes it is kind of uh, gruesome it is indeed taxing both physically and mentally so you need to kind of uh, get adjusted to it and yes if you complete it the journey can be worth it it's not as bad as you uh, think it is but uh, certainly you need to put in a lot of efforts and the re returns may not be kind of proportional to that uh, the efforts you give but any which way you have now selected this particular field and you have to go through it and each field has its uh, pros and cons so these are five basic tips which i'm going to share with you which may help you to kind of go through this uh, wonderful journey of mbps so tip number one the first tip i'm going to give you is to know the abnormal so in the first phase you uh, learned about the normal anatomy normal physiology and normal biochemistry of the human body so second year onwards you will kind of start exploring the abnormal uh, things uh, associated with the human body so two major subjects which will help you do that is uh, pathology and microbiology microbiology mainly concerns with the lab diagnosis of the infectious diseases mainly and uh, pathology encompasses the entire gamut of uh, approach towards how to uh, uh, kind of come to a diagnosis for both infectious as well as non-infectious causes and then to complement that once you have uh, reached a kind of diagnosis as to what illness the patient is suffering from then you have pharmacology which will tell you about what kind of drugs you need to treat or manage uh, your patient so you have to start looking into the abnormal uh, the deviation from the normal anatomy physiology and biochemistry uh, so as to once you take the clinical history of the patient then you and then you examine the patient then you come to a conclusion what what is known as a provisional clinical diagnosis and then to confirm that you sometimes need the radiological uh, diagnosis and or the laboratory diagnosis so these are certain uh, tests which you will do which will support or kind of confirm your diagnosis your clinical diagnosis and that's where pathology and microbiology plays a very important role so start knowing the abnormal this is the best time to explore to know about these diseases and then you will develop on how to approach uh, diagnosis of particular illnesses tip number two tip number two is very interesting it's about the formalities i see lots of students cribbing about the attendance criteria and the uh, internal assessment criteria on social media a lot uh, you have to realize that these are formalities set by the uh, national medical commission and you have to adhere by it it's not much about the faculty imposing it on you it's more about the mandate which you have to serve however philosophical you feel that attendance is not that necessary or you know marks don't matter to become a good doctor but these are some formalities which you have to fulfill and uh, please ensure that you do the bare minimum whatever be the case uh, uh, whatever your uh, opinion about attendance or anything is just physically attended uh, even if you have to even if you don't believe that lectures are not going to help you rather than placing uh, the ball in the faculty court, you take it upon you just clear whatever is required uh, uh, it, it is about 75 percent attendance uh, minimum 75 percent in theory 
and uh, 80% minimum attendance in practical. So that's pretty easy to achieve even uh, uh, as much as 15 to 18 uh, lectures even if you don't uh, kind of attend it still qualifies so it includes your uh, extracurricular activities as well which is a must to have so uh, most of the universities they kind of speak out this particular formalities if you go to the website for uh, example MUHS I'll show it here uh, if you go to MHS in the uh, Department of uh, Education or Academics and then you click uh, courses and syllabus then you get you can scroll and you can find out everything uh, related to your phase the CBME pattern and all the formalities which you require so uh, most of the times the students give the excuse that they were not aware but it is very well stated in the uh, website it is freely downloadable and as a student it is your duty to go through this and just clear the formalities because if you don't then you give a uh, free uh, a full toss to your faculties and then they have the upper hand to kind of dictate terms with you so if you are clear in your formalities uh, then there's possibly very little the faculty can do uh, to kind of you know get one ahead of you so just complete your formalities just complete your attendance just complete your internal assessment marks that too is given in that particular document which i said i'm sure if you belong to an another university there are certain documents which will help you in that way just check your university's website so the third tip Third tip is the best part about second year is obviously the clinics, your clinical exposure is going to start. Uh, this is the best time to explore, like I said, about the abnormal natures of the human body, the variation, the deviations from the normal. So uh, whenever you get posted, just uh, attend the postings. Even if you think that there is not much going on, there is not much teaching, there are no one is coming in. This is what I hear a lot from the students. But uh, trust me, you take matters in your own hand if you need to. Uh, your diagnosis or whatever you do is not going to affect the patient management. And this is the best time to learn because you can afford to make mistakes. The higher you go into the uh, hierarchy of uh, the medical profession the less like uh, the less uh, margin for making mistakes so once you are a medical student that is the best time you can actually make mistakes go blind don't go key i want to see a case of uh, you know a cvs case today or a rs case today and or an abdomen case today just go blind into the wards just see any patient don't touch the file first that is the where the bias will creep in then you will just uh, correlate your findings with the whatever is written in the file so go blind start examining each and every system yourself uh, at and then try to come up with a kind of a provisional diagnosis and then touch the file uh, to see whether you were right uh, in your approach to the diagnosis even if the diagnosis is wrong that's still uh, fine but just see that you are approaching the case in a proper way you are taking the history properly you are uh, examining all the systems including the general examination and this will go a long way in making you a good clinician uh, you know what happens when we see there is a murmur here s1 s2 murmur this that and then when you apply the stethoscope and immediately yes yes there is a murmur there is a murmur so you have to understand to know about a murmur or to appreciate a murmur takes a lot of time and you need to hear a lot of normal heart sounds uh, then only you will able to appreciate a murmur uh, so once we see the file then our mind gets kind of tuned that there is a murmur in this patient and then you kind of uh, just with your bias correlated so that's not the way to go so go blind and very important point uh, regarding clinical postings is the infection control part don't forget this don't uh, run around uh, don't uh, move around the clinical area with your bags on your back and go on touching here and there and sitting on the patient's bed even if it is vacant and uh, touching the patient when it is not actually required uh, lots of students kind of uh, surround a patient that is a bit 
uh, intimidating for the patient as well so many people are coming and asking the same patients try to respect the feeling and also remember wherever you touch uh, and uh, then you have to immediately follow the steps of hand hygiene please take it very seriously you have to understand that the clinical area is full of mi uh, microorganisms which may be antibiotic resistant and also pathogenic in nature and then you are going to uh, kind of spread them uh, we often like to give excuses ki it's a busy thing and uh, busy ward and we don't have enough sanitizers we don't have this we don't have that yes all agree but uh, as a medical person or a medical budding medical you should kind of try to uh, work around the system and do as much as possible if the sanitizers are not available carry your own sanitizers and touch only when required if it is a part of your examination then only touch if you want to uh, read something from the file once you have touched the file then you are expected to, to do a good hand hygiene after you have touched the surroundings as well so uh, just follow, try to follow that up and that will make you a good uh, clinician and whatever you are going to pursue in the future uh, fourth tip is that you don't need to know everything and you cannot know everything this is something which i have to make very clear to my young students here uh, when we were in second year we did not know everything about pathology we did not know everything about a microbiology i'm a md microbiologist now but trust me i even I, for a few seconds, thought that chocolate agar was made up of uh, chocolate. So even if you cannot cover all the topics, it is all right. You have to understand. Even if you think that the classification of cephalosporins is very difficult, it's all right. Yes, do try to improve with each and every exam. But if you do not uh, or if you are not able to complete some kind of portion or some topic, it is absolutely fine because you are going to only progress to the next years and then all this is going to come back so don't think that if i'm not able to kind of complete a topic in time uh, then i'm losing out on this race it's not like that it's not a race you are your own competitor and try to improve with each and every uh, kind of exam you face yes there are certain topics which you uh, need to know more about like which are the norm, normally the commoner uh, infections uh, as regards to microbiology it, uh, I can give an example like tuberculosis, malaria, uh, HIV, HPV etc. These are certain topics you should know but that doesn't mean that you need to know each and everything about microbiology even I in my second year did not know each and everything about microbiology none of those even those who claim to be knowing they are either outliers they were very brilliant and uh, or they are li plain lying so you don't have to kind of you know in your second year itself finish each and everything which is there in second year and be a very perfect kind of student no that is not required even after your second year there are certain things which will you will keep on hearing for the first time and science itself evolves so much that no one can kind of uh, be up to date uh, till date forever no one no one in this world so be open be uh, uh, open and curious about knowing things but uh, be a bit uh, relaxed that even if you have not covered XYZ topic that's okay you lose some 5-10 marks that is alright that is not a big deal uh, we have to improve to uh, improve our patient care first of all you have to get this very clear your improvement should be based for better patient care and not for better marks per se yes marks are a good to, thing to have in this competitive world but don't make that your only target try to improve in each and every exam you give and then surely you will face l much less uh, kind of fear of missing out what we call as FOMO these days so you don't even if you have missed out on certain topics that is absolutely fine the person who is telling you ki he or she has finished everything has, is also probably lying or is a very brilliant person whom you are not going to compete uh, either which way so you have to look at it in that sense uh, tip number five 
so tip number five is similar to what i just said it is that you are your own competition you are not competing with your uh, colleagues or your batchmates or anyone else you have to somewhere realize your limitations your own limitations everyone when we take mbbs everyone wants to be a super specialist most of us want to be a super specialist someone wants to uh, be a cardiologist a cardio surgeon neurologist neurosurgeon this that but uh, somewhere you have to understand your own limitations you have to know your own strengths and then go proceed about uh, that way Do, just don't see that nowadays toppers are taking general medicine and dermatology and radiology this that so if i mug up so many mcqs i will also get this particular xyz seat that is now not how it works because you are not you have just entered the clinical area you don't even know which all fields exist which is ms which is md uh, where, which of the dnbs exist which is the real world where are the jobs etc so don't try to focus on these things at this early age uh, yes the system today demands that you uh, do more of mcqs but uh, just try just realize that if you do the uh, routine stuff uh, in a regular manner then yes you automatically your your ability to solve mcqs is going to be uh, enhanced uh, surely and you can do pretty well in a the exam you have to realize that some students are brilliant and they will always score uh, more than what you do it is irrespective of the fact that they are uh, focusing only on the mcqs or they are doing only a particular thing or they are reading from certain resources or they have uh, got the subscription of a particular uh, uh, tutorial or whatever you apps you which you have today so you have to realize somewhere that what are your strengths and what are your limitations and till what extent can you yourself go uh, can i really manage to secure a general medicine seat or uh, even after giving my best uh, you know i will fall short of my desirous branch how many times should i repeat etc all these thoughts will obviously come after the final year uh, so you have to take one step at a time you have to kind of live in the present and do your best give your best shot at whatever you are doing uh, regularly study that is the very important thing uh, which we want to kind of say to you that you should study regularly just a few hours it is not necessary that you have to study uh, long hours uh, it kinds of sound kind of sounds cliched but that is what it is uh, you just try to understand this topics uh, rather than focusing on uh, mcq parts i have nothing in particular against the private uh, apps or whatever it is but uh, uh, when you watch those videos especially in uh, fast speed it is a kind of a uh, you know a ready-made uh, information which you are taking and that too at a fast speed so i don't know how much of it is going uh, and uh, getting kind of uh, embossed in your mind so try to read actively from the textbook try to see the patients do the clinical postings very well even if you can uh, if there is no one to teach so to speak as more many students do complain so uh, try to find someone there are there is always someone who is very eager to uh, teach try to find some junior person like a uh, jr or jr might not have that much time so you find a sr who is willing to teach and always show your faces to the unit in charge uh, in that way that the uh, HOU knows that you are around you try to uh, be around in the wards during your posting time so that you they don't get a kind of impression that this batch is only bad they don't attend the posting this and that this is what often happens and uh, faculty keeps on blaming the students and students keep on blaming the faculty it's just passing the ball to each other rather than trying to improve uh, some way or the other you have to realize that the biggest loss uh, when clinics don't happen or whatever teaching activity does not happen the biggest loser here is the student and not the faculty who is going to progress in his or her life any which way irrespective of what uh, kind of results you show 
so uh, that is uh, what my message is that yes you keep on saying things like uh, teacher is not teaching well they are reading from the ppts this that uh, part of it which may be true it's a kind of generalization uh, if you ask me honestly but then you have to realize that who is the person who is uh, missing out the most if you keep on cribbing about it and not do anything about it then you are the one you the student is the one who is kind of missing out on many important things so you try to uh, kind of take that extra efforts if certain topic was just read out to you even listening to those words can actually help what all said and done if you are bunking lectures and doing something productive then probably uh, it is uh, justifiable but if you are bunking lectures and not doing anything worthwhile then uh, it's not going to help either which way so just even sitting for the sake of it and some uh, uh, terms fall on your ears and then uh, M mcq on it comes in your need or next whatever exam you are going to give imagine that one particular right answer can take your ranks uh, to places uh, one or two marks make such a huge difference so uh, and plus your formalities are also cleared your attendance is cleared and all that stuff so do try to give a ear whenever you are in there uh, you are there in the lectures and all uh, and practicals i have seen uh, we have the practicals in a small group discussion uh, generally by junior faculty or jrs or sr and they do teach with passion they are just uh, the srs are just pa passed out and they also kind of want to show their own knowledge of the subject so in uh, if you say it's a kind of show off they still they teach with very well uh, they prepare the topic and uh, uh, somewhere you have to realize that rather than blaming the system or the faculty and this that the further footage could not be saved uh, due to some technical reason but i have covered all the important topics uh, do check out my other social accounts and follow me there uh, like share and comment on this video if you have any questions on this topic do comment and don't forget to subscribe to my channel uh, have a great day.